Hello and welcome to Cold Smoking's Digital Cookery School. I'm Taran. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your own bacon. The video looks at all aspects of the production process from selecting the right meat through to salting, curing, slicing and even cooking. I'll even show you how I cook my bacon so you can see how to render down the fat really nicely so you get that absolutely crunchy melt in the mouth bacon. As an extra at the end of this video, I'll look into all aspects of storing and presenting your bacon on gold, silver boards and vacuum bags. And if like me, you enjoy giving gifts to friends and family, you're gonna really love that bit, I can assure you. Don't forget, if you like this video, found it interesting, please leave us your comments, give us a massive thumbs up and subscribe for more of the same. Now, sit back, relax, and let's just get into it right away. Bacon is traditionally made using pork belly or loin. These two cuts of meat can be cured with the skin left on or removed as in the images here. Pork bellies tend to have more fat in them than loin meat and are reputed to make the tastiest bacon. When purchasing your meat, you can ask your butcher to remove the skin and the ribs to save time. If you don't eat pork, a great alternative is lamb or turkey bacon. With lamb, you can use either bone shoulder or leg meat. Either cuts make great bacon. Whole turkey breast can be cured to make bacon in much the same way as you would with pork. And the great thing is, you can use the same curing salt ratios. Got some lovely pork belly here. We've uh, taken the skin off already. I'm just going to trim up a little bit of fat on here get cracking with that straight away. Don't want that when we um, cure it. Um, and to be perfectly honest with you, what I'm doing today is a bit of an experiment. So I've got a piece of belly here. I'll just weigh it. I think it's around about two kilos. No, it's one and a half kilos. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide this into four pieces. So I'm just going to go straight through. Once we've cut this into four, these are going to be my individual experiments. Now they're not going to weigh the same, they're just the same size in terms of area. Uh, to cure them, what I need to do is to calculate the exact weights of these and then approximate how much salt I'm going to need for each one and also calculate and very accurately weigh the prior power so that we don't over cure these. Okay we're ready now to add the curing salt to the bacon so first thing we need to do is to weigh it out and um, to do that I'm going to be quite accurate with my scales. I've weighed out all the different pieces of meat, you've seen all that. I've calculated the amount of salt for each particular one we're doing. And um, for number one, we're going to be working with 394 grams of meat. We've got 10.6 grams of salt. That might seem to sum a little bit too accurate. Uh, with the salt, you need to be reasonably accurate. Um, but a gram here or there is not really going to hurt too much. Uh, with the prod powder, you do really need to be accurate, so I would recommend getting a set of scales which goes to two decimal places. Uh, right, so first thing first, we're going to need 10 grams of this salt. Um, it says 10.6, so I'm going to go maybe a little bit more, so this is the fraction too much there, but I'm looking around about 11 grams should be okay. Okay. So there we've got exactly 11 grams in there. I'll put that to one side for now. Put the scales back on there. We're now going to weigh out our curing salts. Now for 394 grams, if you calculate that, 2.5 grams per kilo comes out at just under one gram. It's, it's 0.98. So you can round that up to one gram. I'm going to be very careful with this when I weigh this. So you can come in and have a look at this. Okay, so we're just, we're just putting that in to the cure, into the scales, just to get that just right. So there we go. That's 
that's fine. Curious sort back so you can see that. That's very accurate. We're now going to mix that with the salt. That we've just weighed. Make sure there's nothing left in there. And you can see that is our blend of salt, smoke, and curing salts. Now for this particular one, we're not going to put any sweetener in it. We'll do that for a few others, and I'll show you in the next video how to do that. But uh, let me let me just get these in the bag. So this is our number one bag. We've, we've numbered it number one. I like to do most of the curing in the bag. It saves getting salt all over the worktop, and uh, if you're going to apply that amount of salt to that piece of bacon and it's not in the bag, chances are you're going to lose some of that salt. So make sure that all goes into the bag. I'm going to push that, come in nice and close, you'll see what I'm doing. I'm going to push that over the surface of the meat. I'm going to rub some off like that and then turn it over see if I can get some of that salt on the fat side. Now as this starts to cure, what you'll find is that the, uh, the salt will turn into a brine. And when it does that, you'll end up with um, that salt going all around that piece of bacon. So that's one that's ready to go. We can pop that in the vacuum machine. I'll do that now. Come round the side and see what I'm doing here. Nice and close. So we're going to seal this in a vacuum bag. You can see the air's out of that, so we'll just pop the vacuum in there. Right, and we'll just release that. Now we do this in a vacuum bag, uh, and this is our preferred method of curing because you get very close contact between the salt and the meat. Um, we'll label this up so that we know exactly what's in here. We've got a little paper label on here and that'll tell us what we've got, what we've cured it with, the date that it's gone into cure. Okay, probably a great time for a quick recap. So, when dry curing in the bag, we use 30 grams of cure for every kilogram of meat. We also scale the ingredients depending on the weight of our meat. And this will comprise for every kilogram, 27 and a half grams of salt, 2.5 grams of Prague powder one. And remember, that's for every kilogram of meat. Once this goes in the fridge, we're going to cure it for one day for every 13 millimeters or half inch of thickness, plus two days at the end. So as this is one and a half inches thick, this will be cured for three days, plus two days at the end, making a total curing time of five days can let it go for an extra day, that's not too much of a problem. Once your meat is in the bag and in the fridge curing, you'll see that the salt will draw some of the moisture out of the meat. This will sit in the bag, as you can see in the bottom of the bag here. Don't think that's too much of a problem. All you need to do is scrunch the bag up and that will bring all that brine in contact with the meat, like you see me doing here and then you'll get a nice even cure over both sides of the meat. Swap it over daily and do the same on both sides and you should be absolutely fine. Well, we're back. It's been a week since we had this initially in the cure, so it's been in the fridge. Just a reminder, every single day I have been overhauling this, which is essentially giving you a good old squeeze, turning it upside down and putting it back in the fridge and I've done that for all four packets. All we're going to do is just going to open up the bag. I'm in nice and close so you can see what I'm doing. All I'm doing is I'm just rinsing the cure off. I'm not rubbing it or anything like that and that's particularly important if you've got herbs on it. You don't want to rub the herbs off all the way. Straight onto some paper towel and then all I'm going to do is pat this dry ready to come off the paper. Make sure there's no remnants of paper left. Onto an open rack, and that'll now go into the fridge for 24 hours to dry. And we'll come back to this tomorrow, 
where we're going to fry some up and taste it. Our bacon has been in the fridge overnight. If you look down at the bacon here, you'll see that it's lost quite a lot of its shine because it's dried a little bit. Now, we're going to slice this into rashers and you can slice this by hand and that's absolutely fine. I'll show you how I do that with a nice sharp carving knife. The great thing about this is you can make them as thick or as thin as you like. It can be a bit tricky slicing these evenly. Um, so what I tend to do as a nice little tip is to freeze it. Here's one I froze for about two hours. And this is great if you've got a slicer as well, because it means that you get nice even slices. And what it means also is that as you slice it, it doesn't move and flex. So you can see these are coming off really nicely. So that's a great tip. Works perfectly if you've got a mechanical slicer as well. So you get very, very accurate cuts. The problem when you cut on a machine is the fat side. You get what's known as fat drag. If you freeze your bacon before you pop it onto a slicer, you get shop quality cuts. And that is my wonderful tip for slicing bacon and doing a really good, accurate job. Right, we've got some bacon here that we've frozen. And we're gonna be putting this through the slicer. So let's get cracking. We've got this set to about two mil. It's giving us slices like that. Really nice wafer thin. These crisp up beautifully in the frying pan. And they also pack down really nicely in the gold silver boards. So here we go. amazing slices so accurate and what we'll do is we'll get this onto gold and silver boards and we'll get this packed in and vacuum packed and it'll be uh, absolutely beautiful and uh, we're going to pop that straight back in the fridge this is going to friends and family later on today we're going to pop this in the frying pan now uh, we don't add any oil into the pan so we've just got a pan we're going to warm up here we're going to pop the bacon in we don't want to cook bacon too quickly. Certainly in my experience, that's not a good, uh, a good thing to do. You tend to burn it if you do that. So what we're going to do, once the pan's heated up and we start hearing that old lovely crackle, we're going to turn the pan down and then really just cook the bacon nice and slowly so it doesn't burn. What that does, that allows the fat to render down and it gives us the most amazing beautiful crunchy bacon without it actually being burnt. Right, as you can see, these are rendered down really nicely. So we've literally got this on a, a very low flame. It's the lowest flame you can get. And just let this bubble away. Don't force it to do its thing. You don't want a crispy burnt bacon. You want a nice crispy rendered down bacon. And you can see the amount of fat that's just come out of that bacon. This has only been going a few minutes now. So we'll come back to this when it's done. Right, this has been going for a few more minutes. I'm just turning this over for the very last time, just to render that fat out. And you can see this is absolutely beautiful. Beautiful bacon. And we didn't get any of that white scum that you get when you buy bacon from the shops because this has had all the moisture removed. Now that 24 hours in the fridge, you can extend that to 48 or 36 hours. Um, if you want to, it doesn't have to, you don't have to. I mean, this has only been in 24 hours, but the longer you leave it drying, the less moisture you'll have in the bacon, so you'll get a better crisp out of it. But that's almost ready to go into a sandwich. So Whenever we make bacon and we're going to give some away to someone, we always like to pop it on these gold silver boards, slip it into a vacuum pouch, and it just makes it look really professional. So if you come in nice and close, I'll show you how we're going to do that. So we've sliced all our bacon up. We pre-froze this, so we've got nice even slices. And all we need to do 
is to pop this on our board and it looks like you bought this from a shop. Makes it look really professional. So if you're gonna be doing this at Christmas, you can do it for your bacon, your smoked salmon if you make it. That's very, very simple to do. We sell all these boards and bags on our website. If you go to coldsmoking.co.uk, you can find them there. We'll pop that on vacuum, and there you've got the most amazing finished product. And that's your nice smoky bacon ready to go off to your customers. All our gold silver boards come with vacuum bag options and they can be obtained from our website www.coldsmoking.co.uk If you're interested in some of our other ready-made bacon cures you can obtain those from our website www.coldsmoking.co.uk well, thanks for watching all the way through. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I'm now off to eat this lovely bacon sandwich. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a like, do leave us a comment, subscribe, and click on that bell if you want to see more videos like this. Cheers now.